Hey everyone, Luminous Plasma here, and I just want to make a quick video showing how easy it is to swap the scissor mechanism uh, keyboard uh, keycaps on um, these older MacBooks. And uh, what I'm using here is an old um, MacBook Pro keyboard that was uh, dead, and I'm actually just uh, moving the keycaps um, from white to black because, you know, obviously for aesthetic purposes, but I just think it'd be really cool to uh, show this off. And uh, this is a late 2009 uh, unibody MacBook uh, polycarbonate. So uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into this video. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is uh, just grab the key here. And uh, it's recommended to use like a flathead screwdriver. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're gonna go deep into the scissor switch uh, mechanism to just simply pop the keycap off without taking the mechanism with us. So that leaves the plastic uh, scissor switch mechanism behind and that just takes the keycap right off. Now on our black keyboard, we'll be going with the M key. So uh, also since we don't care about this one, it doesn't really matter um, if this gets damaged or not, but as long as we don't break, break the plastic, but we'll keep with the same method here of just inserting our flathead screwdriver and taking the keycap off. And this is the most effective method because you don't have to screw around with getting the mechanism back in there. So basically you just take your M key, drop it down, click all four sides in and uh, you're good to go. So uh, I'll just do a few more examples and uh, different angles. And um, yeah, that's as simple as that, it's so easy. All right, so the thing for the bigger keys is that uh, they do have a metal bar in there. So basically pry it off in a similar fashion. And then when reinserting the new key, uh, just make sure to orient this bar properly. So we just gotta pop it out. And basically there are two little holes right here and here. And you just wanna slide the bar into each hole and just make sure they're like that. And then just completely lay it flat to ensure they do not pop out of uh, their sockets. And uh, there you go, we got a fully functioning key cap right there. And I'll show it one more time with the shift key. And uh, I think this one has actually two sets of, yes it does, it has two sets of the scissor switch mechanism. So you might wanna try going in from the side maybe and um, just prying it up from the top. And sometimes the bar and this case has separated from the keycap, but it does not matter since we are removing it. And uh, here's a closer look in the back there. Just press it down. You got two separate uh, full-size key um, scissor switch mechanisms there. So we can just toss the white key aside. And let me quickly get my shift key back. It's black, I've not disconnected it yet. And as soon as I free it, we will have the metal bar again, just like uh, before and um, get my uh, flathead here and just free it loose. And also, this is also a good time to like, if you have an air compressor or whatever, but all these little particles are caked on here. So I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't like uh, get stuck anywhere. But um, anyways, so also that's like the membrane right there that makes contact with the keyboard. And um, obviously in the smaller keys, it's in dead center, but this one's in the middle. So anyway, reinstalling this uh, two holes either side, just like before, make sure they are aligned. And once they are aligned, just go 90 degrees, lay it down, click it in, there you got a shift key. Now I would say the trickiest key on this keyboard is of course the space bar. It has uh, actually two sets of bars running along so this top and bottom. You don't have to worry about the ones in the middle because those are just there for support. But when threading this back in, you do actually need to pop off this top, one of the two bars, thread it in, and then when putting the keycap uh, back on, you know, thread it at your 90 degree and then press down and that's when uh, you'll get both of them to connect. And there are four holes, but these two are actually in line. These are not actually off center. They will be in line like that. So there's just gonna be a tiny bit of space. So I'll try to demonstrate it right here. So going in, uh, you do got two sets of scissor switch mechanisms on either side. 
that hold it in. So you just gotta wedge your uh, flat head in between the bar and all that. Just press it down and then go to the other side and free it loose. So uh, there's just gotta free it on there. There we go. So I'm actually gonna be cleaning this off camera, but if you get a closer look in there, you'll see two sets of holes and the bar. So uh, you'll thread it in like that, stop it down, and uh, you'll be good to go. Now, before reinstalling uh, the keycap here, um, you would want to, I guess, remove the bar on this one since I will be reusing the one that's already uh, left in there. Um, it's up to you if this is like rusted out or for any reason it's just damaged or gummy or gummed up. <laughs> you can just uh, swap it out with a different bar if you got a kit like this or this actually isn't really a kit. This is an old keyboard, of course. Um, but it does appear that I actually have cracked off a corner, but I did not see any shards or any um, pieces of uh, this plastic corner here when um, removing the keyboard. So it is possible that this uh, computer has been uh, removed or taken apart uh, the keycap before prior to me again, opening up uh, today. Um, but this is actually a great uh, opportunity to um, demonstrate how to replace or remove the scissor switch mechanism in case of damage or if it's missing. Now looking a bit closer, you can see this is actually how uh, the key uh, scissor switch mechanism actuates or whatever. And um, it is held in with like one, with uh, three pins or three uh, holes right here. So you got one, two, and then three. So. For removing the scissor switch mechanism, you'd want to first, uh, let me sit up real quick. First, insert your flat head into one corner of this upper portion. Cause remember you got a little nub here, a little nub there, and it hooks in at the bottom. So we already got this side out. So now after that, it's just gonna fall out. So the little hook I'm talking about is right there. And basically when this uh, opens and closes, when you reinstall this, you want to get the hook in there first like that. Then pick a side to insert the nub back into, which I guess would be this side. And then the other side lift up slightly while keeping the nub uh, inserted. And then there you go, it's popped back into place. Obviously it's damaged, I will be replacing it with the good one off camera but the upper nub that's missing would be right here. And that would connect, of course, to the space bar. All right, now before replacing uh, the keycap, the final step is to uh, make sure that you leave a small gap between the bar and the chassis. So not that much, but just enough where um, you can see here, there's just a tiny little space between where the bar rests and where the edge of the keycap sits. So, oh, you also wanna pay attention to the orientation. As you can see, there are wider grooves right here where it hooks up and then uh, skinnier grooves right here where uh, it also hooks up. So we actually have to check to see if I even did this right because I wasn't actually looking. So we got, um, oh, it is oriented right because we got the skinnier nubs right here and the wider ones at the bottom. So this is gonna be a perfect installation. And now we just gotta put the um, bars through the little holes on the sides just like so you can use your finger or this flat head here seems to be struggling a bit with it but it's not a problem oh it popped out so give me a second if i can't do this you know just cut back to when i can but it looks like it's almost in <laughs> this one's really struggling with me. Come on, there we go. All right, so once you get the bars lined up, you just want to do one more quick check that you have your bar evenly distributed and then do your 90 degree drop and click, click, click. There's many, um, eight clicks. And uh, anyways, there you go. That is the space bar, one of the hardest uh, keys on here. All right, so I think the last unique uh, key on this keyboard that um, is not the same as, you know, the default square ones is probably the function keys at the top. And uh, it's not even that difficult. All you need to do is just lift up, put it, try to put it straight in the middle 
And then of course, like this is just going straight between the scissor uh, switch mechanism. Obviously I'm not getting a straight shot on that, but as you can see, this one pops straight off. I'll now actually try to do it again. Uh, hopefully get a more cleaner pop on this one. Uh, put it right between uh, the scissor switch mechanism, just push straight through. I'll do two more just to show how easy it is. And um, yeah, that is about it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope the, this helped. And uh, you know, I'll just cut to the finished product. Um, but yeah, this has been a quick tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, took something away from this. Everything clicks just like how it did from factory. And um, yeah, it's a nice little aesthetic mod, I guess you can call it, you can do to your MacBook. So I uh, hope you enjoy. See ya.